<laughs> Welcome to Wintergott on Wednesdays. Every week we're adding a new part for the Marble Machine X. This week it's the programming section. And by the end of this video I want to ask you if you have any feedback for me on how I potentially might be able to improve this system. But before that I want to show you how I built this. But I will keep the building montages really swift and quick so we can get to the interesting design discussion as fast as possible. Okay, see you on the other side. The process starts with me designing the object in CAD. So this is the programming wheel with its eight sections revolving it. And I started building this one prototype section. Next I test fitted this first prototype section onto the machine and the fit was nice but it was not really snug, it still had a little bit of play in it. If you hear, this one has a little bit of play in it. When the levers are closed there's no play at all but I want the sections to registrate very precisely before closing the levers. So I went back into Fusion 360 and adjusted the tolerances and also added these extra cross studs. Prototype 2, verse 2. I started by drilling 3mm holes with a drill and then I changed into a 5mm spiral down cutter. The down cutter router bits leaves almost no tear out on the high quality birch plywood. So, we have our two test plates, so the registration, this one has a little bit of play in it. If I take the new one, I can't move it, there's no play. This, this, this and this cavity and these outsides will go against these in this direction and make sure for a very snug fit. I didn't close the levers yet. But even though I didn't do that, I can't move it in any direction. I like that sound. I made two test strips representing one channel. We know that internally in this strip, the distance between each programming pin is very precise. 14.85, 14.80, 14 14.82. What we want to test now is the distance between the sections. Because this distance, when we go from one section to the other, needs to be exactly the same as this distance. And I'm experimenting with trial and error to find out the exact radius of the curve. We want it to be 1483, something like that. And this looks a little short. 1483. Um, 1483. Okay, I didn't set that up. Hmm, I was right to a thousandth of a millimeter, <laughs> seems like. And you can always manipulate the caliper to show you what you wanted to show you.
I made two handles that stick in from the front so you can grab the panel like this and then the back side fits straight into the grid of the programming wheel. Okay, like that. You can spin the handles out and you can attach the levers like this. This thing is solidly on there. So I experimented with brushing the surface for a more matte gray finish or having it cleanly black like this. So the whole reason that this needs to be removable is because we want to go on a tour. I will build 16 of these sections, so two complete setups. There's eight plates on the machine playing a song and there's another eight plates with the technicians being reprogrammed. So when the first song is done, the technicians put the eight new sections on and when I'm playing song number two, they can then reprogram the first set of programming plates. This is the direction of the programming wheel. It's the opposite direction from the first machine. So the pins will come up like that. These are 25 millimeter rod magnets. They snap right into place like this. There's a lot of people objecting against the use of magnets because of their brittleness and you could argue that you could make a pin like this. This is a 5mm metal rod with a glued disc magnet on the bottom. So that would never break. On the other hand, I've been trying to break these. There I got it and they're much stronger than what they need to be on the machine. And let's say something gets stuck in the machine, then it might be an advantage that we have a magnet that will break here. So perhaps you could argue that the brittleness of the neodymium rod magnets is an advantage in this case, as some kind of a safety measure so we don't break something else in the machine. I've been designing this whole system to make it fast to reprogram it. It's goes really fast to empty all the pins. So I think this looks very promising. However, there's a plot twist. This system is limited to a musical division by four. During a coffee break in Trolletta, Marius mentioned an idea for me about offset pins. And that has been growing in my head since then. And I have an idea about that. Let me show you the plot twist on this system. And here is the plot twist. Welcome to the demonstration of the plot twist. Here to the right I have Fusion 360 and to the left I have Logic. We're starting out by telling that one click in Logic, like that, is one turn of the crank. And on one revolution of the whole programming wheel we have 64 turns of the crank. So we copy it once for two, copy it twice for four, we have eight, 16, 32. This whole section from here to here is the loop of the programming wheel. One crank turn is these four programming pins. It sounds like this. This is what I built today. 32 programming holes, one eighth of the programming wheel. One section sounds like this. When we loop all that together, all eight sections, we have the full loop. I just made some example music to show you how this works. And if you listen, every crank turn is still divided by four. This is called 16th in music. And what's nice with all these math and geometry is that it adds up when it's looping. Listen now, section 8. One, two, three, four. Did you see what happened? The programming wheel made one full turn and the music used to continue. The loop adds up in a nice way. So far so good, mm, not really. And this is where the cool stuff start to happen. We divided everything in four, but not all music is divided on four. For example, Star Machine 2000, a Vintergarten song, that's based on triplets. 
So this would make the marble machine not able to play triplets. Another problem is that if we program a waltz on this grid, you can program a waltz in two ways on this grid. First, double tempo. And now half tempo. So if you look at the MIDI notes, I'm keeping on the grid. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. So the music adds up, but the loop doesn't add up. So there would be the normal place to loop. But we have this extra bit here. Listen now. So the math doesn't add up. Actually, if we had a vault, we would like to, it to loop already here. So that we're doing 3-4 on a 4-4 grid makes us these extra bars. And one of my idols, Jan Tirsen, he always have like 17 bar loops and odd number bar loops. So you can actually turn this into musical advantage, but I wouldn't like to be limited to always have to do that. So the first problem we get when we divide one crank turn into four like this is that Walt's songs doesn't end up periodically with the loop of the programming wheel. The second problem is that we can't play triplets. A triplet is when you divide one crank turn on or one beat into three. It sounds like this. If you listen, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a triplet. If I take the same chord change that we just heard in 16th, that sounded like this. And then I make a triplet version, then the music sounds like this. Maybe you already see, this also adds up in the loop. So we're soon coming to the end of the programming wheel here. And listen now. No problem, it adds up. But how do we do that on the machine? If we're gonna make this into a triplet, we would need to move some of the programming pins and offset them like this. What if we make offset pins? Here's the offset pins. Instead of having four rod magnets like this, we could water cut this from five millimeter metal and just glue a disc magnet on the bottom. And instead of four, we have divided it on three. Remove this pin and remove that pin. And you could still have only straight music by using only the straight pins, or you can use the triplet pins. And it opens up for beautiful stuff because there's magic involved in this. First of all, we can play both 16th division but we can also play triplet. But if we program a waltz on the triplet grid, it adds up with the loop. That's the magic. So this is a waltz. And if I add a click from the crank turn, you will hear that it goes down, 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 down. So the crank turn is in between the strokes. But now, we're section seven, we're going into section eight, soon is the loop. Et voilà. The waltz adds up periodically with the programming wheel, thanks to it being programmed on the triplet grid. Is this also a game changer for you? <laughs> for me, this is a game changer because it opens up the machine. Imagine going to a concert with the Marble Machine X and you have the pounding disco dance songs from the Marble Machine X, of course, that it's gonna do very, very well. 
but all of a sudden it can play like this more music box waltz kind of somber song in 3-4 tempo and it just go round and round and round. I would like to see that on a stage anyway. <laughs> Works every time. Anyone else feeling the triplet hype? I'm going to pin the top comment under this video where we can have a design discussion and I'm really interested in hearing if you have any other ideas on how I can improve this. So I'm going to start the discussion by already pitching in two of my own ideas. To be able to reprogram this fast for the technicians live, I think if you imagine that we make a template on the CNC machine with holes in it. So for every plate we have a template that covers the whole plate. And when they're programming, they know that they just have to put a pin in every hole in the template. I can even invite people from the Windegatan audience to come and help out on the live tour by reprogramming the plates. So we could have a little gang of 10 people in white coats and protection glasses doing the programming on stage. And then if I had this foolproof system of holes, it's like an easy task. Just, just put pins wherever there's a hole, right? Another idea I have is changing these programming pins completely and instead use this block magnet, which is much thinner. We don't have to use the offset pins at all because we needed to make thousand offset pins. Imagine if I have help from 10 people reprogramming the machine live, they have to keep track on different kind of programming pins. My new idea is to make two tracks of holes per registrator, one triple track and one sixteenth track. You will only have one type of programming pin. There's a lot of people suggesting also that we make plates with pins that you can activate like, like a pen, like this. So, so this pin is activated, this pin is not activated. Only problem with that is that we need 10,000 pins and then I didn't account for triplets. I put a lot of all these kind of restrictions in the top comment for you to feedback on. I get a lot of emails with suggestions but I can't always reply to them and you guys can't see what people are suggesting. If we have the discussion in the top comments, that could create much more of a nicer community feeling and you could link to reference videos on YouTube and it could be a really, really creative place and I will see everything you write there. So let's also try to keep the top comments really clean about the design. What do you think? Brushed matte or glossy black? I will try to keep these videos a little bit shorter than, than this. There was just too much triplet hype today for me to manage. Okay, take care guys. You're the best. See you on the next Vintagata Wednesday. Did you see Falcon Heavy in the launch? I was trying a new way of lifting marbles 1.5 meters up in the air while having the live stream of SpaceX simultaneously landing two boosters and sending a car into orbit. I was... <laughs> yeah. Well, well. Each to his own, right? <laughs>